Hello there. Um, in this introductory video we're going to introduce you to the Fluid Designer interface. Um, so if you start uh, the Fluid Designer application, um, the opening screen that you get should look something like this one here. Um, the objects that are displayed could be slightly different because the um, folder that's displayed up here could be a different folder. So that could be the folder for example. Um, or it could be the earrings folder. Just depends on uh, how Fluid Designer has been uh, closed down previously. So what have we got in the Fluid Designer interface? Well we've got, as you can see at the top of the screen, we've got a file, edit and render and help menu. Um, rendering is not so important in terms of 3D printing because uh, rendering is about creating photorealistic images of your objects which is uh, quite an advanced topic um, but it is something that you may want to do at some point uh, but what you notice is that there's another menu system over here and this menu system is connected to what's happening on the workspace so we've got a menu system up here and a menu system over here um, there is actually also a hidden menu system now fluid designer is based on an application called blender and if we click on this plus sign up in the top corner here which says show debug tools um, there's another button appears here and this is the blender button and if we click on this one here the menu systems will all change we get a different set of menus here um, and a lot more features actually appear and uh, I feel that they uh, can make life a little bit difficult for the beginner so rather than using the Blender interface, um, what we suggest you do is to stick to the Fluid Designer more simple interface. So if I click on Show Blender again, um, the menus will return back to the default Blender menus. And if I click Show Debug Tools, that little button there for going to the Blender menus will disappear. <coughs> so there are a lot of menus here, but um, We've tried to keep it to a minimum with the basic uh, fluid designer menus. Um, now, these buttons here are quite important. Group library. If you can't see a particular folder displayed here, if you click group library, it will analyze what's on your hard drive and find all the folders that are listed on your hard drive. So if you add it, if you create a new folder, if you want to create a new set of patterns, if you do that yourself, it won't instantly appear on this menu. It will only appear if you click Group Library. And then if you select the, the new uh, folder, so if I select Patterns Alchemy for example, to fix it on this menu, what you need to do is to go to file and save the new startup file. Save the new startup file. And what happens then is every time you go to file the new and reload startup, the alchemy patterns will appear. So uh, if I switch to uh, lighting, for example, if I go to file a new reload startup file, notice alchemy will appear. Um, so group library is uh, an important button to click to refresh this menu and you can always then go to file and save startup file. Um, now what is this panel here? Well this is the browser window and as, you've, as you can already see as we uh, click on different folders here we get different objects appear here. Um, so chose the Harrington font for example and so what can we do well we can take an object each of these um, files here can be dragged and dropped onto the workspace so this pa this panel over here is the workspace now you see that when that happens that this window moves from here back over to the left so that you can actually start to work on this object here. Um, 
Now this panel here is the outliner window and the currently selected object is this Harrington font A. Uh, but there are lots of other objects available in this particular uh, file but they're not in view, they're hidden. So in this outliner window here <coughs> it basically outlines all the objects in this current document, in this current file. Now if I click on these eyes here I can view those individual uh, uh, objects uh, but I can't click on them I can't select them I can select the A and I can move it around in fact but I can't click on any of these objects that's because the uh, viewport selection is not switched on as soon as I switch these on as well as viewing them I can then click on these objects and move them around. Now objects that are hidden like this in the background it's not intended for you to actually move them. They've been positioned there and they've been sized to particular sizes so uh, if we select this one it's one millimeter wide and ten millimeters long. Um, it's not intended that you change that object because that object is actually used to create the thickness around this particular object, the Arrington A object. So really, these objects should be hidden, uh, and the only objects that should be in view are the objects that you really need to change in on the workspace there. Um, so, <coughs> um, so this is the outliner window. So we've got the browser window where we can select a new file to work with. So I can open up the letter E uh, and then we've got the outliner window which lists all the objects that are currently in on the workspace. Um, and then at the bottom of the screen here we've got a, a text window. Now sometimes in the text window there's a lot of information instructions on what you can and can't do and even instructions on how you can actually create the object. In this instance with the Harrington font um, it just tells you that it's Harrington font E. Um, so this is just a text window, a help window. Um, now over on the right hand side we have what's called the properties panel and I can move it apart, around like that, I can close it completely I can click on the plus there to open it up and you can open and close this window by pressing the N the N key on the keyboard. Now before I press the letter N I'm going to just click this button here to start screencast keys. This is just to help me make videos. Now if you look down in the corner here if I press N on the keyboard you'll see the N displayed down here and you'll see that the properties panel is opening and closing each time I press N. So what have we got in the properties panel? Well, at the moment this icon here is selected and this is a curve and this indicates that this object that's currently selected, the Harrington font E, is a curve and if I just scroll to the bottom of the outliner window here, this is Harrington font E, notice there's a curve icon here. Now if I remove this thing called a bevel object now the bevel object is the cross section which is 1 by 2 and that's actually this object up here which is out of view at the moment out of view, I could switch it on um, but it is in fact hidden uh, just behind the letter E there ok but I'll switch it off because that's the best thing to do with those objects if I select Harrington font E if I remove this object we go back to that and that is in fact the raw curve and the 1 by 2 object the 1 by 2 cross section is wrapped around it to give you a solid 3D printable object and these cross sections here are set up so that they will be uh, 3D printable and, and it just makes life very easy for you to select a different thickness, a different size for your object. So if you delete that, 
you go back to the raw curve itself. Um, so let me just put, uh, put the thickness back in. Over here we've also got um, an icon show the main information. And that's quite an important one to use in the properties panel because it gives you the actual dimensions of this object. So it gives you the X dimension as approximately 10 millimeters. Well, the X direction is the red arrow. So what we're saying here is it's approximately 10 millimeters from this side to this side of the letter E. And I can actually, uh, if I go to view and top view, I can measure that with a ruler from the uh, toolbar here. So if I click on the ruler and I measure it from one side to the other, you can see it's about 10 millimeters. I've started a little bit too far on this side. So X is about 10 millimeters. And if I press the escape key on the keyboard, that will cancel the ruler. Now the Y direction is the green arrow. And it's saying that that's about 13 millimeters. So if I measure that with the ruler, try and be a little bit more careful this time, you can see that the height is about 13 millimeters, which is what it's saying here. Now the Z dimension, if I just hold down the center mouse button and if I just rock it, the Z is coming upwards. This is the Z axis, the blue arrow, and it's saying that that thickness is currently 2 millimeters, 2 millimeters. The grid here is about 21 millimeters, which is ideal for working with sort of jewelry size items. Um, so if I go back to show the curve data information, if I change this from 1 mm by 2 to let's say 1 mm by 5, you can see the thickness has changed. If I go to the main information icon, the Z has also changed to a thickness of 5 mm. Um, now there are other uh, values in this um, main information uh, panel in the properties uh, window. There's the location, so if I move the object, you can see the X location changes, the Y location changes, and if I pull it upwards, the Z location changes. And so you can move it around with the arrows and reposition it. You can also rotate the object. So if I rotate it about X, and here what I'm doing is I'm holding down the left mouse button and dragging along the bar. I could just click at the end and rotate it slowly, or I'm just holding the left mouse button and dragging the bar, dragging the mouse along the bar to rotate it quickly. Here I'm rotating it about the Y axis, and here about the Z. Now if I just type in 0 into all of those, so just click in and type 0, I can reset everything back to the start place. And it, it is quite important to work at the origin with objects. Um, now one of the other uh, options that you will later want to use in this properties panel is something called the modifiers. And uh, there are lots of different modifiers that we can use. Um, if I just click on array modifier first of all, this is a mathematical uh, function whereby we can get two copies of the same object, or three copies, or four copies. So we can quickly generate patterns, multiple patterns, by using an array modifier. And we can also adjust how much they're offset. Now from the point of 3D printing, objects really need to be touching to 3D print. If you select a relative offset of one, the objects are not print touching and so that won't print as a solid object and the more you go away from one the, the less your uh, object is joined together so you know relative offset you will generally want this at a value less than one um, now the other two uh, um, options in the properties panel here you really won't use very much um, this one you can restrict the view of the object uh, well, you can do that over here in the outliner window by clicking on the eye. So if you want to just temporarily hide the object, you can do that. You can do it in the properties panel as well. I tend to use the outliner window. And then this one here is about um, materials. 
So we can put, change the colour of the object. Well, that's not really so important for 3D printing. It's much more advanced feature. Generally speaking, you want to know the size of your object and the rotation of it. We want to be able to use modifiers like the array modifier to make multiple copies of it. And very importantly, we want to be able to change the thickness. So that's the properties panel. Now, over here, there's another plus, and if we click on that, this opens up something called the toolbox. The toolbox. And if I press the T key on the keyboard, the toolbox will open and close. So it was N on the keyboard to open and close the properties panel. Not very obvious N for properties window. But T for toolbox is, is quite straightforward. Now, if I click on the um, letter E there, to get rid of that from the screen, I can press the X key on the keyboard and delete it. And the reason I'm going to do that, actually, no, I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to go to Edit and Undo and uh, put it back in there. Um, so I'm just going to show you one feature of the Properties panel, and that is you may be interested in knowing the, the volume or the weight of, uh, of a particular object before you print it. Uh, but this object at the moment is actually a curve and so there isn't anything here that says 3D printing and I'm, that's what I'm going to show you in a second. So what I need to do is I need to convert this E to a mesh. And when I convert it to a mesh, what will happen? You see the colour changes slightly um, and what we're really doing is saying that this thickness and this size, we're confirming that and this is really going to be the object that we want to print. And we'll talk more about meshes and curves in another video. But I need to convert that to a curve. And notice if I open up the properties panel, I've still got main information icon. I've still got modifiers, but I haven't got a curve anymore. And over here, instead of a curve, we've still got curves for these other objects, but we've got a triangle now. That indicates that this is a mesh. And if I press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode, notice there's uh, things are different. Things are very different. What we've got if we zoom in are meshes. That's what a mesh looks like. And again, in the next video, we'll discuss more about meshes and uh, curves. So press the tab key there. So in the properties panel, we've got this uh, 3D printing icon now that we've got a mesh and uh, sorry in the toolbox panel and so what we can do is we can work out what the volume of this mesh is so if I click the volume button there down at the bottom of the panel it tells me what the volume is um, now it's actually giving me a really rogue value here three um, six okay this is uh, something that uh, doesn't quite work as it should do in Fluid Designer. This clearly isn't 118 million centimeters cubed. This value is calculated wrong. What we need to do is to move the decimal place three, six, nine times. It is a rogue value, this one. It's a, a calculation that's not working properly in Fluid Designer. If we move this nine times, this value, the, the, the volume of this object, is really 0 0.11 centimetres cubed. 0 0.11 centimetres cubed. So that's a, an important consideration to make here. Alright, so this is a toolbox uh, panel, so we, we could work out the area of the object as well. And again, that value is, is way too high. Um, more important area is not important really volume is important and we do need to adjust this that's displayed here to take into account the volume of the object okay so that's the toolbox panel the uh, properties window the uh, help uh, text window down at the bottom here the outliner window the browser window where you can drag and drop objects onto the workspace window. And then you've got uh, some menus. 
Okay, so that's it for this uh, introductory video.